May 31st, 2025. They don't never forget. I would step out of bounds in the Western Conference Finals and cost my team a chance, the NBA Finals. And once again, I let the city of New Orleans down in the playoffs. But this time, there was no one else to blame but me. Walking off the court, I felt like my world was caving in. I had nowhere to turn. So I faced the music. I walked up to the podium after the game, put on my best suit, and addressed the media. I had to act like I didn't just do what I just did in front of millions of people. I had to put on my best poker face and answer these questions as best as possible. Because anything I say can and will be used against me in the court of the NBA. <laughs> Felt like I was on trial. Felt like I was talking in front of a jury, trying to convince them that I'm innocent. Meanwhile, the whole world just saw me step out of bounds and complete the blunder on national television. So the best thing I could do, take accountability. I made my mistake. I got selfish in the moment. I got caught up. I wanted to be the hero so bad, I became the villain. Ultimately, I would not let this moment define my NBA career. I owe it to the city of New Orleans, my teammates, and the NBA fans alike to bounce back from this. For right now, you guys can put it on me. And I'll carry it into the offseason. After what felt like hours of answering questions, I finally got up, took one last look, said goodbye to the media as I prepared for the offseason. No matter how many questions I just answered on that podium, the fans were going to have questions about my decision all offseason. While getting Ubered on the way home, my driver decided to listen to an NBA podcast. Bro, Keontae Blue? More like Keontae Blew it. No, Diddy. I don't even know why we're talking about, dude. He was never one of those ones. All right, fair. He's not a bust, but he's nothing better than a role player. Let's be honest with ourselves. I respect you. The city of New Orleans doesn't love you, and the Pelicans organization needs to betray to you for a 2027 second round pick because that's what you're valued at. You are nothing. Hey, looking down from heaven, disgusted. It should have been you. Offseason began with the news that head coach Willie Green was fired. With that news breaking, I immediately hit the gym and didn't waste any time. Shoot, at this rate, anybody could be expendable. Safe to say, it ain't safe. In this offseason, I'm working on my craft in particular, my outside shot. And listen, I'm entering year three, which means I'm up for a contract extension. The Pelicans want to go through with it. And all the top rookies in our class probably going to get the max. Needless to say, Wimby's probably going to get the super max rookie extension from the Spurs. And while I'm not a 7 foot 5 unicorn, I gotta prove to New Orleans that I'm worth it. The media is wondering why the New Orleans Pelicans will bother investing their future in a guy who can't even stay in bounds when the season is on the line. <laughs> but my focus was working on my outside shot. The more of a threat I am from 3, the more the offense opens up. I was in the gym so much to start the offseason, it started to feel like it was me versus me. But as a wise man once told me, it's a battle you'll never win. So my mantra all summer is I'm rolling wherever the ball takes me. Less than a couple weeks after firing coach Willie Green, the Pelicans found our new head coach from a Rockets assistant and NBA all-star, Corey Wells. And while I don't know anything about him, guess I'll find out soon enough. The next stop on my off-season tour takes him to LA. Last season, I got to play with Tavion before his big day. This time, I'm playing with Lil T, aka Trevor Cole, before he gets settled into college. He committed to UCLA from Chicago, which shook the neighborhood up. On his arrival, he met this kid named Brent. I don't know too much about him right now, but apparently, he's the starting guard out there in UCLA. That don't matter to me. I put up with Alonzo Kilpatrick, aka Rook. <laughs> he not a rookie no more, I guess. But for tonight, it's the NBA players, it's the college players. I haven't played with Trevor since he was 15 years old and I was 18, so I know his game didn't change. He's always been athletic just like his brother, but his vision was slightly better. What I thought was a friends and family trip quickly turned into a business trip as Trevor and Brent came out smoking. So I tried to hit him with my patented post fadeaway. That ain't work. A little T had an NBA ready jump shot and I could tell he was going to be just like his brother, maybe better. 
He had a lot to live up to, and I couldn't wait to see it. And on this court, I had to get on the scoreboard as them boys came out smoking. And this Brent kid, I have to admit, he had nice handles. But I've been guarding NBA players for the last two seasons, so there's no way he thought I was falling for any of that. But just when things were cool, Lil T pulls out the craziest dunk I've ever seen in a pickup game. A 360 behind the back, I don't even know what you would call that. Man, that dunk had so stunned, he looked at me, and I was looking at the ground. <laughs> and immediately following, the unexpected happened. Lil T threw a lob up in the air, what goes up, must come down. That man Brent, boomed all over Zoe, and I was in shock. I just witnessed the murder, a body bag, and I didn't do nothing to stop it. Once again, I thought this was all fun and games. These kids are not playing with us. It got serious quick. Brent hit Zoe with a crazy Euro step in transition, so I felt like I had to come back on my end and assert my dominance. Remind them who's the real NBA player, who's still playing for NIL deals. <laughs> Things got serious as I hit my post fadeaway turnaround. My boy Zoe got up for a post of revenge on top of Brent. With no shirt on, he flexed on him. But I have to admit, we was getting outplayed. This kid Brent had me on the ISO. And while I didn't get hit by any of the moves, I got impacted by the poster. This man boomed right on top of my head. I jumped and got body bagged. And to make matters worse, he walked through me like I wasn't even there. And at that moment, he had the presence of a pro. And I couldn't believe it. At the end of the game, my boy Trevor found Brandon transition for the three. And he hit it. This man had a three rim game and some handles and in that moment i knew one thing for certain i had to make sure i check out a ucla game this season before i know it trevor and brent gonna be in the league <laughs> with the hiring of new head coach corey wells management gave him my number and he immediately texted me while i was out of ucla told me when i get back to town slide to his crib and he got an indoor basketball court and my first time seeing him he insisted that we won once i don't know anything about his backstory or what he did for a living all I know is, this old dude said run once, and I said bet. So I took it to him off the rip, thinking it was finna be sweet. And as soon as he got the ball in his hands, I knew something was up. Bucket. I started to scratch my head a little bit. I thought I was gonna take it easy on his old head. But he started serving me up from the rear range. Then it clicked in my head. This dude must be a former player, ain't it? But why does he wanna run once with me? These are all thoughts that floated through my head as this man was hitting me with all kind of pivots, pump fakes, and mid-range buckets. And the disrespect came when he sagged off my three-point shot. This man read my scouting report. Imagine your head coach disrespecting you so much by leaving you wide open from three, and getting the ball and torching you. Then I noticed it. This man was wearing a championship ring on his finger. It looked like the Boston Celtics from 2008. I had so many questions floating through my head. Meanwhile, I started realizing I was getting dropped off. So I started getting physical with him. I knew he couldn't handle me if I was really playing my hardest. So I got the ball back, and as crazy as it might sound, I started cooking my head coach. I hit him with all kind of mid-range arsenal. Hey listen, coach, you ain't the only one that know how to get to the basket and pull up from mid-range. I'm 6'9". He look like he all about 6'3". So I just used my size and my age to get through to him. Listen, I refuse to start the offseason 0-2. I already lost to my little bro Trevor, I'm not finna lose to my OG coach, who look like he all of about 48, the receded hairline and the beard. So to cap off the ones, I hit him with my patented post fadeaway, cash. And I felt good. I don't know if I was supposed to feel good about it, but I did. Then it hit me. This man really challenged me to ones. First meetup, is my head coach? I actually kinda like that. Then he told me, youngster, Google me. I was like that. But now I'm here to teach. I want you to become more of a scorer this season. So I wanted to see where your bag was at, where I can add to it. And after that moment, me and Coach became increasingly tight throughout the offseason. So much so, that I was at his crib almost every day. Picking up game, learning knowledge. It was even nights I slept over. Listen, I'm still in my rookie apartment. So being at Coach's big crib, in the end though, felt like heaven. And he had an indoor gym. So I was freeloaded. Nonetheless, Coach was giving me game about the NBA life. He told me he played 10 years against the NBA's best. And he had longevity because he knew how to score without burning out his body. And that's exactly what he wanted me to learn how to do. So all the dunking and layups are cool. 
But if I want to have a long lasting career, I got to develop a jump shot consistently. So I was in his gym almost every day working on my three pointer. And I was feeling good about it too. This upcoming season, I might be seeing a new Keontae. <laughs> Minus the dance moves. Man, this summer, if I wasn't at Coach's crib, I was at the Pelicans facility. Coach really put the battery in my back that I should be an offensive scoring threat. He told me he expects me to be the score leader on this team for this upcoming season. So to start a training camp, Coach had a genius idea. He invited eight of us out to his crib. We decided to run fives, but with a little twist. Coach and the assistant coach were drafted four players. And Coach Wells, <laughs> he ain't picked me up. Of course, me and him had a little rivalry going. He had Zach Zion, Tobias, and Jared Allen. As for me, I was with my dog Herb Jones, Jordan Hawkins, and Zoe. And that was my first time getting to meet our assistant coach. And his name is, uh, oh yeah, he goes by Walter Brown. Apparently he was a former player as well. Definitely looked a lot older than Coach Wells. From what Coach was saying, he was the coach at Grambling State for the last five seasons. As a former player, he was a primary defender. So anything we needed about defense and coverages, we go to him. For wisdom as well. <laughs> coach looked about 60 plus. And I don't know what he got in the tank. But as for me, I'm coming out trying to show my teammates and my coaches all the tips I've been learning this all season. So I came out attacking the basket, of course, as bread and butter. And as for Zach, that man was on a mission already too. I can say this even about Zion. So all three of us playing like this? One seed is in our sights once again. But as we all know, one seed ain't good enough. We're trying to get over the hump. And the one thing that'll get us over the hump is if I can get my shots down consistently. And the way I was breaking down Zion off the dribble, I had one thing in mind to show and prove in this training camp. That you have to worry about me on offense, not to pass the ball, but to put the ball in the basket. I caught my teammates off guard the way I never even looked to pass for the majority of this game. I had blood in my eyes, looking straight to the basket to score, even when Zion was on me. Baby food. I put this man in a blender and boomed it right over top him and Jared Allen. Dunk was so loud, even coach's neighbors could feel it. The idea is that I should be leading this team in scoring, assisting, heck, I might even be leading them in rebounding as well. Not to mention, I got aspirations of still being a two-way player. According to Coach Wells, there's no reason that I shouldn't be the next up becoming star of this league. I got all the tools in the toolbox. I gotta put it together. I gotta really want it. Not just in practice, not just in the off season, not just in training camp. It's got to register from game one to game 82. And as this game came to a close, my boy Jayhawk hit the clinching three. And Team Zion, Zach, Tobias, and Coach Wells <laughs> all left with their heads down. No my guys, but I gave it to them tonight. And as for Coach, my boy gave us some words to wisdom before we closed out. And he did mention one thing about him having a documentary up on YouTube. So after we left training camp, I made the mission to go find it, and there it was. Apparently some guy named What's Up Sal did a whole documentary on Coach Wells, rookie season in the NBA. That's when I found out this man played with LeBron James, and in fact, they was in the same draft class, 03. But I never hear about him growing up. Shoot, I was born in 04. And I even seen Walter Brown too. <laughs> Old head. We're about a week away from the beginning of the NBA season, my third year. And after having multiple meetings with Coach Wells throughout the offseason, Tom is finally here. And he insists that I'll be the focal point of the offense the entire season. And by the end of the year, I should be leading the team in scoring. And I told him, that's a bet. Done deal. For the first time in my career, I got a head coach that really believes in me. And I wanted to do nothing less than prove him right. Before I headed out, I even took a visit to Coach Brown while he was getting all the defensive film ready. And I asked him, what you think I should be focusing on this year on defense, coach? And he told me, there's no reason that you shouldn't be leading the NBA in steals. You got the perfect frame, speed, and everybody's smaller than you. So let's get to it. My grandson is in college. And I'm telling him the same thing I'm telling you. And I asked him what's his grandson's name. He said Brent. Walter Brent Brown III, actually. And I said, oh, okay, bet. Thank you, coach. And I decided to look him up for a change. Kind of see his offspring. Lo and behold, a familiar face popped up on my screen. When I seen this highlight of him, I knew exactly who it was. My brain instantly just went into scramble mode. You telling me that kid that was dunking on me, Euro Step and Zoe, 
is my new assistant coach's grandson? <laughs> they say people come in your life for a reason. I guess me and Coach Brown are going to be both rocking UCLA gear this season. <laughs> Small world. Well, the time is here. Open the night is round around the corner. And in game one of our 82 game season takes us to Brooklyn, New York, a familiar place of our head coach, Corey Wells. So before the game, we decided to run one quick playthrough, make sure everybody was on point. But up until this point, I failed to mention our rookie, Tyrell Princeton. While I was out in the offseason, the Pelicans drafted Tyrell in the second round. While he didn't have a spectacular career at UConn, kid was 6'9", could face up and attack the basket solidly. I decided to test his gangster. So I remember in the practice before the game, I reached in for a jump ball, got a little violent with him, see how he would react. He was with it, not to mention he stared me down and got in my face. And I liked it. We need that kind of intensity and attitude on his team. And I was hoping he would get minutes in the actual game. I don't see why not. We kind of lack bigs. So if he can get some minutes and burn for us, that will do wonders. But outside of that, I decided that I'm going to be the one that brings the intensity to these practices and to these games all season, starting now. If I pick it up, everybody will follow suit. And I'm here with it. We tip off approaching, I had a chance to get to the free throw line, while I do my best envisioning. We got a new season, year three, and up until this point in my career, I'm averaging about 16 points, seven assists, and six rebounds. Great numbers if you ask me. If I don't want to get that max contract extension, take my team over the hump, as coach said, I got a new level to unlock, and it starts now. I got Mikel Bridges on the menu in the Brooklyn Nets, and as the starting point guard, I already know what my job is. Guard the best player, get my teammates involved, but this season, more importantly than others, is to score. And as for the Nets, apparently they got some new kids starting, a second year player named Israel King. I'm not really too much worried about him though, because I knew my assignment. Number one in white. As for the coaches, Coach Brown and Coach Wells are making their debuts in their respective roles. So it would mean nothing more to not only get a win for Coach Wells in New York City, to get these guys their first W's in their first games of their career. So out the gate, I set a screen for Zach, knowing I would get the ball right back. But instead of looking for the open man, I jab behind the back, and I pull up for a mid-range bucket. Y'all know me from the mid-range, basically cash. And that's the difference this season. Instead of obviously looking to pass all the time, be aggressive. Get on the scoreboard early, and dictate the tone of the game. That's something I'm familiar with, but not necessarily every night. But not every night that I get out hustled on the offensive glass by a shorter guard. Add to my cap to him. Back on the offensive side, I was in attack mode. If I wasn't scoring, I could still pass the ball. Y'all know that, right? I found my guy Jared Allen making the guest appearance. Here go the difference. I got the ball in the left corner. I hit him with a jab step pull. And as a wise man once said, hand down, man down. We were up by 22 at one point in the second quarter. And I'm sitting on the bench chilling watching greatness. All the guys picking up right where we left off last season. Minus the stepping out of bounds, we were the number one team in the NBA by record. And we ended the season in disappointing fashion. So to see guys like Zion coming back really flexing, told me all I needed to know. Everybody was locked in. Mikael Bridges, he was locked up. I'm really trying to embrace this two-way position this season. And once again, they found me in the corner with a little side jab. I pull a three and with the hand down once again, the result is the same, bucket. And I hit the shot and immediately turned to coach with a head nod as if to say, coach, I got you. It's like this all season long. I already know Coach Wells is proud. After having to sit through all the media, all the threats in the off season and all the agony, I came out in game one like a game buster, getting steals, transition dunks and abusing mismatches. As one coach said, I'm 6'9 at 220. There's nobody on this court that can physically match up with me, pound for pound. Speaking of pound, I pounded Mikhail Bridges' layup off the glass. I grabbed it for the rebound and pushed it up the break. And I had Monte Morris on me, hit him on a step back and pulled a three in transition. Who do I feel like? Is this the new Keontae Blue? Pulling for transition threes? This is textbook. Who else you know is getting a block, grabbing the rebound, not even looking to pass, knowing immediately that he's going to score? And transition has the balls to take that kind of shot. Look no further. And Zach represented us all. Hype. Excited. 
Everybody was happy for me. Looked like I was taking the next step, even though it was only game one. And as for the bench, y'all had one job. Keep the lead over 30. They said bet and stretched it to 40. And I was just over there, hype on the bench, cheering my guys up. Now do you know, rookie Tyrell Preston scores his first NBA points. And at 40, I was still excited nonetheless on the bench. Even started clapping with Zach. Zion didn't like it too much. I don't know why, but him and Tyrell didn't get along. Regardless of what their status is, the whole team was balling. Even my friend Max got a three in there. And if you know me, you know me and Max got traded together to New Orleans two years ago. So we got a forever bond. And for Coach Wells, <laughs> in his coaching debut, how about winning by 40 in your hometown? I wanted it for me, I wanted it for Coach, and I wanted it for our team. And I finished the game with 25, 12 assists, and 8 rebounds. Not to mention 2 steals. Balling. This is only the beginning. I felt like I had a lot more in the tank. They only seen a tidbit, a sneak peek. And after the game, I was shocked. My PR lady told me that there was fans waiting to get their jerseys and balls signed. <laughs> I really got fans out in Brooklyn? Never would have known. All off season, I was getting tortured and sitting in agony listening to everybody clown me. Now after my first game, I'm signing autographs and taking selfies with kids. I'm really living the dream, but it's only game one. I gotta stay focused. Game two on the way. Game two took us to Charlotte, playing the lowly Hornets. And while this is a game we expect to win handily, I feel like this is a game I could take it up a notch. Or the season coach challenged me, not only be the leading scorer of this team, that I could be the face of the NBA at some point. And I told him I'm down for it. And in games like this, it's where I need to show out. So off the gate, I was taking it to the basket anytime I had it. If I didn't have that, I'm pulling for three. And I may not have made every single one of them. But trust and believe, every time the ball is in my hands, I'm making the right play, naturally. So I didn't hit the three the first time. I get the double team. I find my guy, Zach Levine, who I knew was gonna spray it down. And on defense, I'm playing safety. I pick it off, and in transition, I got one track mindset, attack. And I boom it over top. Charlotte Hornets, future defense. This crowd is Charlotte, shocked. It's a new man in town. Name is Keontae Blue. I'm here to stay. Boone over top defenses. But you know, they say I'm running and dunking. Typical. So I had to prove them wrong eventually. But right now, I'm back on the bench chilling. Enjoying a big lead. Watching my guy Zoe take over the second team. Naturally. By the time I got back in the game, I told Coach, I ain't done yet. So in the mid range, I saw they start double teaming me again. Making a smart play with it. My guy Zach was always ready off the double team to spray the shot. And I'm telling you, we was up by big time double digits. That didn't stop me from scoring. I'm hitting the mid range up, and trust and believe, I'm abusing that jab step. And they falling for it every time. Instead of taking a shot right there, I say, you know what, Bleak Monk? I challenge you to a duel in the post. I turn and fade in and hit the bucket. I'm telling you, bigger, stronger, faster. All the offseason preparation really worked out. We ended up beating Charlotte by 40 points. And I dropped a career high 32 points and 13 rebounds, along with seven assists. And shoot, if I can get two steals a game for the rest of the season, I'm for sure gonna win the steals race. We got a shot at Defensive Player of the Year. But as for tonight, I was all smiles. Me, Coach Wells, Coach Brown, and this New Orleans Pelicans team started the season off 2-0 in dominant fashion. And while some people questioned the hire, even myself, it didn't take much to realize why he was here. I have a few on my back, brighter, stronger than I ever was at any point in my basketball career, and I have him to thank for that. And after the game, once again, it's something I gotta get used to, more fans. It's the part of the NBA life that makes all these blogs worthwhile. The young fans that come to see you for the first time, and you put on a show, they'll remember this forever. <laughs> so will I. As I dapped up the last fans, me and Coach Brown chopped it up about defensive schemes. By the time we got back home, Coach Wells came to my locker and he told me, yo, I feel like you got another level to go up to. I said, bruh, I just dropped 32 and 25 on back-to-back -back nights. That's a lot for me. He said, that's true. But remember before the season, I told you I feel like you can be the face of the NBA at some point. That doesn't stop after two good games. Don't limit yourself from greatness, youngin. Success is a journey, not a destination. That's all right, philosopher. I got you. <laughs> It's October 31st, 
exactly five months since the last time I walked off this court in an NBA game. Game seven left a sour taste in everybody's mouth around the city. But despite our great start to the season on the road, opening night was nerve wracking for me. Tonight's opponent didn't look to be easy. Matter of fact, I'm going against Scoot Henderson again. Apparently Portland gave up on him in the off season and traded him in a blockbuster deal for multiple first round picks to Utah. Utah believes they got their guy in the backcourt. As far as the front court, well, they dipped in the draft and reached for an Alabama State Center named Kofi Musa. And another HBCU product will be my matchup tonight is in their starting lineup as well. His name is Marcus Aduba. Apparently he was one of the greatest players to ever grace an HBCU uniform. And after dominating over there, I guess he looks to match up against me in his rookie season. And this Utah team looks alright. They got size at every position. Might be a great matchup for us. One of those sneaky ones. They're a young team. So the experience is lacking. And as for me, I'm young too. Heck, me and this Marcus dude, about the same age. But on the NBA level, he's still a rook. And I had him locked up at the beginning of the game. As far as offense, I didn't come out as aggressive. Matter of fact, Zach led the way for us. And while we got off to a good lead, this Utah Jazz team was not bad at all. Matter of fact, they had a little twin tower situation down in the paint with Walker Kessler and a young rook from the HBCU, Musa. So as far as us, we gonna have some issues in the paint. When you got a beast like Zion down low, even though he's undersized, overpowering them, it doesn't matter. But it's fairly evident. If I wasn't on this dude, he could score over anybody on the court. So I made sure to make it a point to guard him. But on the offensive side, I contributed nothing right at the end of the first quarter. And coach left me in for the last minute and some change to figure it out. So I used the screen from Rook, pull it for the mid range to get myself going. And now I got Zoe in the game, and our chemistry is elite right now. And I decided to do something I rarely do. Really just pull for a three off the catch. There goes my improvement. I'm a threat now. With the shot clock and game clock winding down at the end of the first quarter, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I got a second year guy guarding me. I hit him with a post spin. Fade and at the buzzer, drain the mid-range shot to get my team momentum. With a double-digit lead in the beginning of the second quarter, it was my time to cook. Behind the back on Scoot Henderson, blowing right past the defense and over the Twin Towers, booming. I dunked right over both of them seven-footers like they were nothing. I'm talking about putting my knee right in the midsection. Statement. I let the city of New Orleans know I'm back and better. I literally shook the rim and the arena. And after that, it was curtains. The jazz got sweet chin music. I was dominating. This jab step had Scoot Henderson going left and right as the shot was going down. And everybody in the arena was a witness. <laughs> even Coach Wells. He tried to fight it at first. Even he was impressed with the way I was attacking and scoring. That's what he envisioned. And at a timeout, my teammates embraced me. But I had that look on my face, I wasn't done yet. But in the meantime, I had to give an appreciation for my coach. As a first year guy, it's nearly hard and impossible to capture the locker room and the veterans. But everybody was all eyes and ears and every time out as he was spit. And for me, this is the first coach that ever put a vision in me to be better. So I had no choice but to be all ears. As far as the Utah Jazz, I really see that they have a bright future in my opinion. But for the now, it's us, nobody else. They can score all they want. When you up 30, that really don't affect you. They tried to double team me down in the post. They forgot I'm a passer, but this time I pass it and get it back. And instead of passing it again, I blow right through Scoot Henderson, lower my shoulder and get to the basket. And let out a yell. <laughs> Season three is if I wasn't in my bag enough, I would hit this running floater over the rookie center. And at this point, I knew it was game time. With this floater, I clipped 40 points on the night. And as if it couldn't get any better, Scoot Henderson decided he wanted to take me one on one. <laughs> Little did he know, he was in 23 on one. Lockdown, prison. I sent his shot <laughs> back to Portland where he should have stayed. Meanwhile, I got taken out the game with a career night. I was in shock. I ain't never been that aggressive on offense scoring wise. Towards the end of the game, I got to thinking, coach was right. 
we got another level to unlock as individuals, as a team. Everybody's going to be needed if we want to get over the hump. Now, whether we play the Lakers again or not, we need everybody playing their best and with the confidence to play their best when it's time to. And it starts in these games right here. And as for me, I dropped my career high 41 points, followed with eight assists, nine rebounds, four steals. And I got to think, I feel great. What's really stopping me from doing this every night? Nothing. <laughs> then it hit me. Path to success doesn't come without struggle. Sometimes you gotta go through trials to reach your triumph. All the OGs always told me, just respect the game. And I get that. And I have been. But I'm flipping my mindset around for the first time. I've been respecting the game my whole career. It's about time I make the game. Respect me.